Thank you, Paul. And our next person is Paul Jordan, a 30-year resident of Flint. He has a master's degree in social work and has worked for the Lapeer and Genesee County um, Community Health Centers for 25 years. For the past six years, Mr. Jordan has taught at my community college as coordinator of its social work technical program. Um, most recently, he has joined with the Michigan citizens in a lawsuit against the governor in an attempt to overturn the emergency manager law on grounds of it being unconstitutional. And um, you have the floor, Mr. Jordan. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank Dr. Wilkinson and the Flint Area Public Affairs Debate for inviting me to participate in the discussion of this important topic. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. These are powerful words, words, important ideas. These are not sentiments to be reserved only for 4th of July celebrations. Intoned once before being tucked away for another year like Christmas decorations. These words are at the heart of what it means to be American. These are holy words. I believe in the truth behind these words, and I bet you do too. In our system of government, a constitution is a covenant formed by the people that defines the limits of what that government may do. A state or federal government has only the powers that the people have granted to it under the Constitution. Even if a legislature and governor think something is a dandy idea, they can only legitimately act within the scope of what the Constitution permits. Our continuing liberty depends upon the enforcement of that principle. I'm one of 28 citizens who are challenging the constitutionality of Michigan's emergency manager law, as you've heard. I must admit that before June 22nd, I had never read the Michigan Constitution. But since then, I've read it several times. In our lawsuit, we contend that the people of Michigan have a right under our Constitution to representative government, and the emergency manager law denies that right. For you constitutional wonks, that's, you should see Article 1, Section 17 and 23. Isn't it strange that we even have to expressly assert that we have a right to a representative government in a lawsuit? Isn't that weird? Isn't it obvious? There are four other ways in which our lawsuit claims that this law is unconstitutional. It unconstitutionally delegates legislative authority to emergency managers who are representatives of the executive branch in violation of the separation of powers required by Article 3, Section 2. It violates Article 4, Section 29's reservation of the legislative branch's exclusive authority to pass local ordinances with a two-thirds majority by granting that power to emergency managers. It violates the right of electors of local governments, that's us, to form charters of governments as laid down in Article 7, Section 32, because it gives emergency managers the power to ignore or amend the provisions of local charters. And finally, it violates the provisions of the Headley Amendment, also known as Article 9, Section 29, by requiring local governments to bear the cost of emergency managers, their contractors, and any litigation expenses without any reimbursement whatsoever by the state. It doesn't end there, though. As you've heard from Mr. Rosicki, the emergency manager law also violates Article 1, Section 10, which prohibits state government from passing any law that voids or alters any contract, because Public Act 4 expressly gives emergency managers that power to do just that. In my view, the greatest 
offense of Public Act 4 is that it violates Article 1, Section 1. And this is the point at which the Michigan Constitution sings a little bit. Because that section states in full that all political power is vested in the people. Government is instituted for their equal benefit, security, and protection. Nobody can deny that Flint and an increasing number of other Michigan cities and school districts are in deep financial trouble. We are in trouble, though, because our property and income tax bases have become so terribly eroded over time to the point where they cannot support an adequate level of public services. Emergency managers can do nothing to change that basic fact. They can only try to balance the books using the existing declining levels of revenue. This is more than an accounting problem. This is an extremely difficult situation, but dictators in Michigan are not the solution. We need to work together to find a better way to finance essential services in financially distressed cities and school districts in order to actually provide equal benefit, security, and protection to all our citizens wherever they live and whatever their means. Thank you very much for your interest in this extremely important issue.